Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I'm gonna quickly go over the basics of Science Olympiad Ping Pong Parachute. If you're new to the channel, I post videos on Science Olympiad every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you're interested, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be updated every single time I post a new video. But with that said, let's get right into it. Now I'm sure you know that in Science Olympia Ping Pong Parachute, there's a rocket part of this video, or not video, there's a rocket part of this event, and there's also a parachute part of this event. Now, specifically when we talk about the rocket of your Science Olympia Ping Pong Parachute, there's a couple different things you want to know. And the first is weight. Now weight is so important for all rockets, but more specifically for ping pong parachute rockets, because you only have 60 PSI of air pressure to work with. That means that if you're testing somehow, if you're testing in a 90 foot building, which they have done in or not, not for ping pong parachute, but for like right stuff in elastic launch glider for national tournaments. They have had insanely high ceilings. So it's not impossible or, or yeah, it's not impossible for them to use something like that for a ping pong parachute. So in those situations, you want to be able to maximize the height you're able to deploy your parachute because that's going to give you the best time. Now, as for the deployment mechanism that your rocket needs, I honestly had a little bit of trouble with this in the beginning. I thought that I might need to put the parachute in here, and once it once my rocket went up, this part would detach and my parachute would come out. I also thought another way would be to put the parachute on top of here and then put the ping pong ball on top to make sure the parachute doesn't come out. But what I actually found out was that it's a lot easier than it looks. All you need to do for a very simple and rudimentary way to launch your parachute, but it works, is to just place your parachute on this and let the ping pong ball dangle somewhere down where your soda bottle is. And then when you launch your rocket, your rocket will go straight up and then it will just fall down. And because your rocket is falling faster than the parachute because it weighs more, it actually allows you to deploy your parachute pretty smoothly. Now there is some sort of kinks you need to work out with this, like you need to put a ping pong ball on top of this. I talked about this in a previous video, but you know, you wanna put a ping pong ball on top of this to protect your parachute so your rocket doesn't just pierce through it. But there's a lot of other things, like you wanna make sure the string of your parachute is entangled, and there's a lot of other things you wanna consider. But just very basically, if you wanna deploy your parachute, just try putting it on your rocket tube and launching it and you should be able to go pretty far, at least with the rocket part of your Science Olympiad ping pong parachute. Now, as for the parachute aspect of ping pong parachute, there's a little bit more that you need to understand. Now, specifically when we talk about parachutes, it's all about something called air resistance and drag. And the more air resistance and drag you have, the slower your parachute will descend. Now, I thought that this meant you have to go as big as possible with your parachute. The bigger your parachute is, the more air resistance you have, and that means you're gonna be going down as slow as possible. So what did I do? I bought a super big trash bag. I think they're like industrial trash bags you would find in a school cafeteria or so. And they're super big, right? They're super big, they're 60 feet long, and the catch is they're pretty heavy. And I didn't recognize that this was a problem, but I just put it, I used it as a parachute. And, and what did I find out? I found out that if you use a super heavy material for your parachute, then the weight of your ping pong ball is so minuscule and compared to that, that it won't actually open your parachute. So what, end up, once, what ends up happening is that your parachute, or that your parachute falls faster than the ping pong ball, and in that case, your, pain, your parachute is pulling down your ping pong ball and it doesn't even open. So what's really important for this event is to get, yes, you wanna get something that's as big as possible, but you don't want the weight of your parachute to exceed the weight of your ping pong ball, because in that case, your parachute will be pulling down your ping pong ball. And 
that means your parachute won't deploy. So if you want to want the very basic understanding of the parachute, then you want to make it as light as possible. Prioritize making it as light as possible as compared to as large as possible. Because if you want your parachute to at least deploy, it needs to be lighter than the ping pong ball. And I realized that a little bit too late, like after I attended the regional competition. And yeah, I still, I believe, I, I still did pretty well in the regional competition, but if, if there would have been a state tournament, then I don't think I would have done as well as I did in the regional competition at the state tournament because I didn't know as well as I should have known about making your parachute lighter than your ping pong ball. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions or feedback down in the comments below, and please consider subscribing to the channel for new Science Olympiad videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay in phase.